scan, and then they rewind, and their machine, you have this $100,000 machine sitting there. The State Bureau of Conveyances, one of the divisions of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, is now in the second phase of a four-phase project to convert more than 170 years of vital state records into permanent digital format. Bureau of Conveyance uh, has stored records starting in the 1800s, 1845 to be exact, to current. Of course, we started off with books, as you can see all around us here. A lot of books that people hand wrote into or typed to actually uh, record you know, conveyances and, and other activity. Since that time, uh, we migrated over to more modern methods. Uh, microfilm would be one of the ways that we have been able to preserve records that were done uh, after you know, that period. The Hawaii Bureau of Conveyances is the only single statewide recording office in the country. It examines, records, and indexes more than 344,000 land and property documents and maps each year, and it issues land court certificates of title and certifies copies of matters of record. On a daily basis, the Bureau of Conveyances inputs between 1,100 and 1,500 documents, and its documents date back to 1845. Right now they're being grouped together as books. So there were roughly 35 million uh, microfilm images that we recently digitized. Those were uh, images that were stored down at our archives, and that was, again, from the 1845 period to current. We have several backups that we create, so the microfilm was one of them. The books, the originals that you see around here, would be uh, something similar. And what we did was digitize over 5,500 of those books just in the last month or two. And the idea with that, again, is for us to make sure that everything that we have on record here, from the 45s to current, is preserved properly and, again, will be in a form that will be easily accessible by the public and other users. The Bureau of Conveyances hired U.S. Imaging, a Michigan-based company, and for the first two phases has spent approximately $1.35 million on the project proving who owns all the land and all the rights to all the land and the minerals all the way back. And um, you now have everything digitized. The uh, importance of the partnership with them is we're, we're working with a company that does this type of work solely, you know, across the U.S. This is their living. This is exactly what they do from sunup to sundown. And they have so many years and project ex uh, projects under their belt uh, that when they came here to Hawaii again, some of the innovation that they uh, adopted and applied here uh, actually saved the state some money. Um, and obviously, we're very uh, pleased with the quality of the work that they've done. So we've been very fortunate uh, to have them as partners. Yep, they work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, they'll take some breaks. They'll, they'll take turns uh, having some time off, so they do get some breaks along the way. But uh, for the most part, there's always someone here. I mean, there's always someone here, 24/7. In late 2015, a team from U.S. Imaging began scanning 15,000 rolls of microfilm land records from 1845 to 1991. Teams of two people worked around the clock, seven days a week, and completed the process in a month. And what's unique about these machines is that in old photostat paper like this, I'm borrow this again, so hold your place. There's a fiber that's in this paper, unlike some of our current paper today. And that, paper, that fiber comes off of the pages as you're putting them through the scanner. Well, all the other scanners on the market, like Kodak, Fujitsu, Canon, they all have glass guides inside of them. And when you put this paper through those glass guides, the fiber comes off and it builds up on the glass guides and it causes vertical streaking on the pages. So you end up covering up data, streaks and streaks, uh, lines get covered up and they just don't work well. So you're constantly stopping, changing your, uh, uh, your glass guides, you're cleaning them. You may scan 30 pages and have to stop and clean your glass guides. So you can't get any production. These machines here have no glass guides inside of them. There's cameras that reflect an image off of a mirror, much like old microfilm cameras used to do. Um, it's a unique process. It's unique to this particular scanner manufacturer. They're built in Germany. Um, we could never achieve the, the production levels that we do with a traditional scanner. This, it has to be one of these uh, Inotech scanners. During the fall of 2016, another team of U.S. imaging workers completed scanning of the thousands of reference books. 
operating in a temporary enclosure in the below ground parking area of the Kalani Moku State Office Building on Punchbowl Street. They too worked around the clock shifts. And we scanned them in color. So unlike the microfilm that we scanned, we only had 256 shades of gray. These scanners capture 16,777,216 colors. So it's tremendously more color spectrum uh, that we're able to capture with these scanners. Uh, they again capture the front and the back at the same time. DLNR Chair Suzanne Case says phase three of this project will be to make sure all the scan images are enhanced and in a form and format best possible for reproduction and access. Phase four will be to make all of these digital records accessible to anyone with a computer. While the Bureau of Conveyances will maintain all of the historic reference books and microfilm, this digitization project ensures a preservation of some of Hawaii's most important and vital historical records. The Bureau of Conveyance's public reference room is open Monday through Friday, except for state holidays from 8.15 to 4.15. Reference books and microfilms will remain available for review.